Here's the good news. That's what it was happening in Isaiah's day. And that's what Isaiah was speaking out against. And that's what Isaiah was calling out there. And, and we see all of these things. It was so dark. And here's what Isaiah says. Get your eyes on the Lord. He says, get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on the king right here. There's a kingdom coming where, where everything wrong in this world is going to be made right. The foolish, the wicked, they're going to be punished. The generous will be honored. The things will be as they should be. Isaiah is living in a world where, where they're exalting evil. They're esteeming these things. The churl. That's, not, that's an old word. Nobody ever used that word before, right? The miser, I think it says in the New King James. It's, it's the scoundrel. Right? They're, they're not going to be respected. Right? And, and, and things in the kingdom age, when Christ is ruling and reigning on this earth, are going to be unlike what we see happening in, our, in the world of Isaiah's day and the world now. You know, that, that's not what's going to be esteemed. And he says the vile person, they'll, they'll speak uh, uh, villainy and, and his heart will work iniquity to practice hypocrisy and to utter error against the Lord to make empty the soul of the hungry and cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. That's what we see, right? The instruments also of the, the churl, the, you know, here you have these, these, these wicked people, right? He goes, the instruments are, are, are evil and he devises devi wicked devices to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the, the needy speak right but the the liberal devises liberal things and the liberal things shall be shall stand there you know here's what's incredible you you look at at the wickedness in this world you look at the way people treat one another the way they they devise i mean you, you know that? they devise devices to destroy the you know with with their lying words you see this you you we, we look around our world and we say okay this is what people do well, again, it's not going to be that. The, the generous person, as he says there in verse 8, the liberal, the generous person, they're going to be honored for their generosity. right? It's, it's, it's going to flip the narrative of what we see now. Remember in Isaiah chapter 5, how did he describe it? That, that, that men were calling good evil and evil good. That, that, that's Isaiah's day. And, and, and so the, the narrative is flipped. Right? The script is turned upside down. I mean, that's our day we live in today, isn't it? People call good evil and evil good. That's what we see all around us. It's wickedness that we see what's being exalted and what's being promoted around us. We, we look and, and, and I'll tell you very, very clearly, you know, we call it, you know, the right to choose. God calls it murder. You think those things aren't important to the Lord? They were worshiping Baal and, and Ashtoreth and these, these gods and sacrificing their gods in the altar to Molech. And the innocent, God, God sees it the same way. It's, it's the destruction and the, the, you know, the, the killing of innocent babies, of the unborn that we see today. And, and, and what's crazy is our world would say, that you look at our world and you stand up and you say, hey, wait a minute. You know, li li life, life is, is viable here, right? This is, this is life. Well, when, when does that happen? Before I knew you, God said, right? Before you were formed in the womb, Jeremiah chapter one, he knew him. He called him. You know, you, you, you read through the Psalms and you see how we're, we're fearfully and wonderfully made and how God formed us. And you say, where, where, where's life? If you read through the Bible, right, God, God understands. God knows where life begins. At conception, we can understand that, right? And yet if you say that today, oh, man, what, well, don't you understand? No, I do understand. But what about this? No, no, listen. There's wickedness. There's evil. There's things that happen in this world. But, but, but more evil, right, doesn't make things right. And yet we're called to, to stand up for the fatherless, the orphan, right, to defend the innocent and the unborn is looked at as evil today. That, that's just, that's reality, right? If you stand for the biblical truth and then you, you watch politicians trying to skirt that line because they think, well, I, I believe that, but I don't want to say that because they want votes. It's an interesting thing, isn't it, to watch? But to actually stand up and to declare God's word and, and to be pro-life in this, well, you're evil. You're evil to defend that. And yet, and yet the evil is, is that, you know, we support, you know, the, uh, the, the caring choices and the, the pregnancy centers and all of those things that, that wonderful in our city and the, the mobile ultrasound. I, I know, I know the, the, the girl that, that does the ultrasounds on, on those things in the tech, right? And they'll go down there 
and, and yet they're the villains. And yet when the girl's had the abortion already and is knocking on the door because of, of the complications and the problems that she's having, and they say, don't come in here. And they turn that, they turn that, that girl away and they don't want, they, they, the Planned Parenthood don't want anything to do with her after it happens. You know who ministers to that, to that young woman? The Christians and the believers that are there, let's help you. Let's get you medical care. Let's take care of these things. And they, oh, those are the people that, you know, they, they said, don't even look over there. Don't listen to them. And they're the people that are there to love them even after the fact. And the ministry of these people, to care for people, not to condemn people, to love people. They're the ones that are giving grace. And yet, the, oh, man, these, they're, they're so hateful if you're, if you're, you know, doing this. We're evil. And they want to change the laws. You know, you, you, I think of, I was reading Daniel with, with my little guys this week, and I was just struck by the fact of the, the evil administrators that were there, the, the, you know, that were set up to rule. You know, we talk about the princes ruling in justice, and you remember Daniel was over them, but they didn't like Daniel. So what do they do? Well, we got to change the laws to make Daniel's righteousness evil. Yeah, we're going to change the laws to make righteousness evil. We're going to add in our constitution in New York State in Proposition 1. And we're going we're gonna to change this where we're going to, who man, do you look at that? Have you read that? Have you seen, you know, what they're doing in our nation? And in our, in our country and in our state, where, where, where things are twisted, where it's like, oh, no, we need this. We're, well, listen, we have, we have the most abortion-friendly, and I don't mean that in a good way, state. What are they trying to do? What, are, what is the reality behind this of what they're saying? It's not what they, what they come up to say. It's what's behind it. And the laws and the evil things that they're, they're doing, it's, it's wickedness. And, and it opens the doors to criminalize those that even stand up, well, you're discriminating against, you know, people for this thing. It's, it's, there, there is opposition that's evil to these things. And we don't think that's happening in our day and that these things matter. Look into that. It's going to be on your ballot. That'll be there. That they want us to, to do these things. And, and, and it's dark and it's wicked. But here, here's the good news. That's what it was happening in Isaiah's day. And that's what Isaiah was speaking out against. And that's what Isaiah was calling out there. And, and we see all of these things. It was so dark. And here's what Isaiah says. Get your eyes on the Lord. He says, get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on the king right here. There's the kingdom coming where, where everything wrong in this world is going to be made right. The foolish, the wicked, they're going to be punished. The generous will be honored. The things will be as they should be. And he's, he's going to speak out. He's calling people to wake up. You know what he says in verse 8? He speaks to the women. He says, rise up, you women that are at ease. Hear my voice, you careless daughters. Give ear to my speech. He's addressing the women of the nation in that day, right? And, and, and he's not speaking about the kingdom age at this point. He's going back to speaking to the, to the women that are there in his present day, living in Jerusalem, because they're a barometer of the morality of the nation. They're a barometer of what's happening there. You know, because what's happening, the, the men, they're not, that's what we see in our day. The men aren't in the picture. The ones that are caring for, for the innocent and for the, the children and raising the children that have a, a concern for the family, it's the women right here. And, and, and you can tell where the, where the nation is by, by the state of these things. And he says, you guys need to wake up and listen. You're living at ease. And, 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 and he calls them careless daughters. He says, many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless, speaking to the, to the women here, you careless women, for the vintage will fail, the gatherings will not come. You know, this phrase, many days and years, it's literally days above a year. He's saying, in a little bit over a year. He's given a timeline here. In a little bit over a year, not long, the vintage will fail, the gatherings won't come. You're living at ease, you're being careless here, you're, you're not concerned with the wickedness that's in the nation of these things, and you're the ones that should be concerned. He goes, but this is going to happen. No harvest, no vintage. That's bad news for an agrarian society. He says, tremble, ye women that are at ease, and be troubled. You careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. That, that's a mourning. He goes, they shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, uh, for the fruitful vine. There's going to be lamenting, he goes, but right now, you should, you should mourn now. You should repent in sackcloth right now and repent. Judgment is coming in little over a year and everything's gonna fail and you should be the most concerned about these things. And so he's, he's saying, you're complacent, wake up. Wake up. That, that's his call right here. 
But you know what they're doing? They're living in, in, in pleasure and comfort. They're looking at, and, and they can see on the horizon these things. They can look at what, what happened in Israel right to their north and their neighbors. And, and, and they're just ignoring it and going on with life as usual. Do you know Jesus described the last days the very same way? When, when Jesus spoke about what was going to be happening before the coming of the Son of Man in Luke's gospel, in uh, the Olivet Discourse, he said in Luke chapter 17, verse 26, he goes, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. When Jesus comes, the coming of the Son of Man, it's going to be like the days of Noah. What, was it, what does he talk about in the days of Noah? What does Jesus describe here? They ate, they drank. They, they, they married wise, they were given in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. You can't unhitch Jesus from the Old Testament, by the way, right? Jesus believed in a literal Noah. He believed in an ark, right? He, he believed in Sodom and Gomorrah and, and fire coming down from heaven and Adam and Eve. By the, you know, just going to point that out as you read through the Bible here. And, and, and here he says, that's what they did. Likewise, as in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they, they, they bought, they sold, they, they planted, they built. But the same day Lot was, was, went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven to destroy them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day, I mean, you, you look at it right there. I mean, we, we can just pause right there. We don't want to get too far off. We got a lot of ground to cover in Isaiah right here. But what they do, they continue, oh, that we're eating, we're drinking, you know, we're going to get married. We're going to just go on with life as usual. And that's what's happening in our world. People look at all this, what's going on, and what do people want? Well, we, we want to, you know, it, it's interesting. You, you look at this, right? And again, you know, we got it's election season, right? Oh, we got we to gotta vote. We got to get somebody in there. We got to do it. And what, what, do, what, do the, what do so many people with an unspiritual mindset want? Well, we just want to go on with life. We want it to be good. We want to be able to eat and drink and be merry we don't want to look that, that there's things happen. We, you know, we want it to, to go on this way without realizing that what we need to do is sackcloth and ashes and repent and get right with the Lord. That's the answer. The answer is, is the king, the king of righteousness. That, that's who we need. Not, not that, and listen, not that they're, it's not important. Not that, that, that these things don't matter. We, we live in this country. We've been given a responsibility to, you know, that, that we have in this nation, in this country. We, we can vote. We can use that. We can influence these things. We should be salt and light. I'm, I don't, don't misunderstand that, right? I'm not saying, you know, don't, don't care or be involved with those things. But what I'm saying is, is you know, people want, want they're looking. You know, they're, they're looking for these things. They're looking for, you know, some, some person to come along so they can just go on with life as usual. And what he's saying here, that, that's what they did. He goes, but, but what they should be doing is repenting and turning to the Lord. 